Okay guys, so today's plan for Steve's car is to get the engine painted, the intake painted, and a couple other little small things. So I ended up getting another bag of media finally from Tractor Supply, and I did go back and blast this. And I thought I was done with it, but uh, when I got it back in and got to looking at it today, uh, there's a couple spots I'm going to have to hit again, so I'm going to have to pull everything back out and hit it again. Uh, I've got some rough edging around this oil fill tube at the back and then I missed these two intake bolts and the back back here are some flaky edges so what I found out was when I hit this with my blaster it removes what's loose uh, and I had no idea that all this was loose as bad pretty much almost all of the sides uh, on the that very flange edge right here on both sides it was literally blowing off in chunks little small chunks but Anyway, when the blaster gets to good coating that's actually stuck, it feather edges it. You can't even feel a transition. So I do need to do a little spot right there too. So anyway, I'm going to re-hit this again. I did go over the whole intake and all it did was rough it up, but the coating stuck pretty good here. I really had to lay down on that Edelbrock logo to get that uh, down. The edge over here was what was coming loose, but I really bared down on that and it took a little bit of time, but Anyway, I'm going to go back over this again, uh, get off all the loose stuff. I think what's stuck is probably going to stay stuck, uh, but anyway, that's the plan is, is to get that all finished out and then get these two painted and uh, prep out a couple other things, get them ready. And then it's going to be paint time. I'll be putting the copper pearl and the clear coat on it, uh, the body color. So what I ended up doing was uh, I went and got this at my local dollar general store this was 10 bucks well let me rephrase that if you guys have been following along on any of the dollar general um, stuff <laughs> uh, it says ten dollars on the sticker uh, it may have been more i don't know but they had a bigger one and then they had this little bitty small one which i think is pretty handy but what i bought this for is to lay the parts in uh, when i use my blaster outside it'll collect a lot of it and i'll be able to sift it and pour it back in there filter it basically through a screen I have. So anyway, I think that was uh, money well spent on that. Uh, but anyway, I need to re-hit that again today and then get this prepped out. I'll have to wipe it down. It's pretty oily from it being put together with assembly lubes and everything and being primed with the drill and all that kind of stuff. So I've been going through all my gaskets. I had this whole drawer laid pulled out a while ago. Uh, I've been going through here looking for gaskets. Um, I have a set of Felpro gaskets, extra ones, that I actually used and covered them with masking tape. So when I mask off the engine with those actual gaskets and I put the same exact new gasket on, I have a perfect tape line edge. So you can see here what I'm talking about. This is the Felpro. This is the better uh, intake gasket set that I like. But uh, anyway, this is the bottom. So you're not going to see this once the intake's on. But the way these are cut out, you can kind of see how they're, they're not straight across on the top. They're just cut out weird. So what people normally do when they prep out an engine is they'll mask off the, the entire edge of the head. And then when you go back to put, you know, your gasket and stuff on and assemble the intake, you've got bare metal showing in these areas here. So let's see if I can explain this a little bit better here. Probably not. This thing's wrapped up pretty tight. So, uh, usually, and what I used to always do when I was younger, is mask off the whole area right here with masking tape, the whole side of the head here. And then I'd paint the engine, and then I'd pull the masking tape off. And then when you put your gasket on there, that's how much of an area it needs to be painted. So, uh, anyway, these have been my mask off ones. And, uh, anyway, this is the better set. And I'm going to see if... Uh, Steve can get me another a pair of these because this is the gaskets that came uh, from Jim when Jim bought the gasket set. Uh, these are kind of sticky, kind of weird, but anyway, the you can see from your uh, part in your head that would heat up your intake is open, and Felpro makes one. Of course, here's a Felpro with it open like it's supposed to be, but they make one that has a uh, two pieces of metal. Uh, spot welded together and it's a block off plate and the reason these are a good idea and what 
I feel anyway, the reason that's a good idea to have this intake gasket on is uh, mostly what we can get around here now is ethanol fuel. They do have, you know, no ethanol. It's a lot more money, but I just run the ethanol stuff. It doesn't hurt anything on my stuff. But anyway, what happens is this is for which I got it masked off, but that's the hole, and then it goes through this deal here. So what that does is it heats up the bottom of the carburetor, uh, but you know, for performance, you want this separated from it. Now in the summer, when it gets 90 and 100 degrees, if your exhaust is heating this up underneath your, you know, this is gonna be real hot. So if you're running ethanol fuel, you'll be running into vapor lock. So I like to get those Felpro gaskets that have that block off plate in them. And that way it just blocks it off and this stays cooler. <clears throat> so uh, anyway, it's basically for heating up your carburetor and stuff. So, you know, it's like in the winter, it, it warms it up faster, I guess you'd say. I, I just always block them off, but Anyway, that's uh, what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if he can get me a set of those, and uh, that's what I'm going to put on it. Um, I don't know. I'm not comfortable with these. I've never heard of this gasket kit, Fire Seal. Uh, apparently, Jim likes them because he builds a lot of Chevys and stuff. So, anyway, that's the gasket kit he bought, but I don't want to run these. I want to run a Felpro with the block-off plate in it. But anyway, I'm going to use a Felpro intake gasket to mask off the engine the problem is when i went through my gasket box i can only find one of my intake gaskets and it doesn't even make sense to me i don't even understand how that's possible so i don't know where in the heck my other one is so anyway i'm gonna have to mask off this one uh really nice and uh because i want to be able to keep this and reuse it this is actually for my wife's car out of her gasket kit but uh Anyway, that's the plan. Uh, I need to mask off that gasket. But I got a lot of prep to do, man. Um, a lot of prep. But, uh, man. So, this is Steve's 327. This is a 1964 327. Um, it's a flat top piston. It is 60 over, I think. So, it should run pretty good. It ended up with a 480-something lift cam in it, so it ought to sound really good, too. But, anyway, the machine shop did all the machine work on the block and the heads. They rebuilt the cylinder heads, got new valve springs and everything, so that's really awesome. It, uh, it should run pretty good. But, anyway, a lot of paint work to do on that, so that's a plan. I actually found a front pump seal in here. And this is only a couple years old, but uh, anyway, it was in my gasket box here. Now this, I wrote on here for 204R, this is the front pump seal. Like if I take the torque converter out, this is a seal that goes in the front of the trans. And it's a good idea, a lot of guys know this, that if you ever take a tra separate a trans from an engine, an automatic, it's a good idea to go ahead and put this in, whether it was leaking before or not, because, you know, you're right there, might as well. But... I don't know how long the seals have been in this transmission, but I'm definitely not going to leave the original seal in there. So anyway, what I'm going to do, I think these are the same for a 700. I'm not 100%, but I think they are. So what I'm going to do is go in there to the computer, go to O'Reilly's website, and I'm going to look up a front pump seal for a 700R4 transmission and see if it's the same number. If it is, I'm going to pop this seal in there. So that way uh, Steve doesn't have to buy a, a gasket seal, whatever you want to call it. So. That is pretty much the plan. So I've had a heck of a mess. Uh, my GoPro uh, finally went on me. It, it got to where within just a few minutes it would freeze. And uh, I just, I got tired of it. It had other issues with audio and I, I just got tired of it. So I didn't really have the money to buy another GoPro, a new one. So what I did was I got on eBay and I bought a used one and I bought an older one than my most recent one. I bought another seven because when I started out, I got a seven and I have a lot of seven stuff. Uh, so when they, and just like that, the battery dies again. These batteries won't hold a charge. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I'm having camera problems. <clears throat> so, um, I don't even know where I was. But anyway, uh, I'll just get on to something different here. So 
I ended up getting a whole nother GoPro. I bought a used one from eBay because I didn't have the money to buy a new one. I bought a used uh, GoPro Hero 7 Black and it seems to be working okay, but I don't know. Just the GoPros, they kind of work, but they, they if you use them a lot, especially when I'm out here in the summer and I use them a lot all throughout the day and I turn them on and leave them on for a long period of time, they get really, really hot and then they overheat and shut off. And from what I found out reading online, when you overheat them over and over and over and over again, it just messes them up. It just burns them up. So anyway, I, I went through several GoPros. So hopefully this one can work a little bit longer, we'll hope. But it'll get me by for now until I can get a nicer one later. But anyway, I finally got the paint in from eBay. The first shipment got lost. I've had so much crap with shipping lately. It, this is amazing. Uh, anyway, the... the engine spray paint got lost in the mail and the ebay seller was really cool he's like i'm going to go ahead and send out another uh, two cans and if the other ones happen to come in just keep them so i am hoping that the other two cans come in but i'm kind of doubting they will you know what i mean um but anyway that's uh, a whole lot of crap uh, going on there i don't have a lot to report really because uh I spent probably a week, maybe a little over a week, working on my house and the yard and the lawnmower. I pretty much did almost everything to my lawnmower besides tear the engine apart and rebuild it. So it's kind of a mess. But at least it started and I got it running. Now I need to buy a battery for it because now the battery won't hold a charge. But I have to jump it. But everything was seized up on it because it sets outside in the winter, you know, and it just everything gets rusty and stuck and I have to go back out and unstick it and do all that kind of crap. I had a lawnmower blade, the tip, the end of it for like two inches was split on the tip of it, had a crack in it or whatever, which I thought was kind of amazing. So I put another blade on it, so we'll see how it goes. But it seemed to work okay, but it is leaving kind of a line down the middle. So who knows? I just have to like go over the yard twice, I guess. I can't complain because I don't know anything on the mower. It was given to me and I've had it for years uh, and it still pretty much works. It does the job and I don't really want another payment. I don't want to go buy a new lawnmower. So I'll use this one until it is no longer usable. I will run it into the ground basically. Uh, All right. So I went up to Tractor Supply and they did have it finally. So that's pretty awesome. So this is what I use. This is the fine. It's the red label means it's fine. And uh, I have used a bunch of this stuff through this little pot blaster here. But I noticed something that uh, is out of the normal because I've used so much of it. You can see that it looks kind of tan. So what they're doing is they're mixing fine sand with the coal slag now. Like a lot of companies, you know, they'll, they're like getting chintzy with their product and still charging the same amount or more. You know what I mean? So... Just another bite in the butt by the economy, I guess. Man, this has been a rough one. Let me tell you, it takes a long time to prep an engine, when I do one anyway, because I like to get every nook and cranny and everything uh, to make sure the paint adheres properly. So in this case, uh, the, the long block of the engine's assembled, meaning the heads are on it, you know, the timing cover, the oil pan's on it. So usually when an engine builder puts an engine together, you know, usually everything gets pretty oily and greasy from, you know, your fingers having assembly lube on them and that type of stuff, motor oil, whatever. Uh, anyway, so this is pretty oily. So I had to go in and I used this prep all, which I always refer to as wax and grease remover because it's pretty much the same thing. This is like 30 or 35 bucks a can. This was a brand new can and there is probably a quarter of it left, but, uh, Anyway, I went in and I used a brand new microfiber with and loaded it up with that and then I sprayed the area that I was wiping and got a bunch of stuff off. Now when I get to the head bolts, in this case the head bolts are on it obviously, so I just sit there and hose it around those head bolts and that's to get, you know, any type of, in case he put lube under the, the heads, uh, some ARP head bolts, you know, you have to, or not, if not all of them, you have to put lube under the washer and the head and all that kind of stuff. So. It usually when you tighten them down, torque them down, it squishes oil out. Well, that's a nice tight little crevice down in there. So I just kind of really hose it all around those head bolts and let it just run out. And then I'll wipe the wipe it while it's still running down. 
but that ensures me that I've got all the oil out around that area. And I have to do it in a lot of these little tight areas, like underneath the edge of the head, front and back, because that's a tight little area right there. And I always do it around the timing cover edge right there. Now, when I paint a small block Chevy, uh, or just about any of the engines that I've been doing about the last 15 years, I like to paint them apart. Now, we didn't do that on this one, obviously, but I usually paint my cylinder heads separate, my block separate, my oil pan separate, my timing cover separate. That way, when it's assembled, none of your bolts have paint on them, uh, and you can see the gaskets in between. And to me, it's just a detail thing. It looks really nice. But in this case, uh, we had Jim assemble the engine, and this is what we did because I wanted to paint it. He offered to paint it, but I wanted it painted. Um, he didn't know we was going to do body color, base coat, clear coat. He thought he was just going to be spray painting it with engine paint and call it a day. So anyway, I red scotch brighted it down uh, after I wax and grease removed the block and everything. I, I wax and grease removed the whole thing. Then I used a red scotch bright to uh, scuff up the cast iron gray spray paint that they used on here. Because, you know, obviously the paint probably wouldn't stick because it, it would be too slick. So... Anyway, in case you guys don't know what I'm talking about, when I'm naming off colors for Scotch Brights, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a deal here. So they have gray. They have a few different colors, but the ones I normally use are either gray or this red color, brown, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the gray is real fine, and the red's pretty harsh. So I used the red first on here and scuffed everything down real good and tore off little strips and worked my way around the head bolt edges, you know. Uh, Anyway, I spent a lot of time cleaning up every little nook and cranny of it, scuffing everything. Then I went back and used wax and grease remover, that prep all, on a new microfiber again and rewiped it again. So you would be surprised of how much stuff you still get off of it. Now this is the second microfiber, and this is how much stuff actually come off. This was a brand new one. You can see how much stuff still comes off when you're sitting there, you know, really, really getting in all the areas and edges and everything. But... Anyway, I'm pretty excited because now I'm to the point where I can go ahead and mask it all off and paint it. Man, what a mess. But uh, <laughs> I have to go through here and I'll have to tape off every one of these ARP head bolt or heads of the bolts because I don't want them painted. I want to keep them polished because he has the ARP bolts to go in the intake as well. So all them little ARP shiny bolts on that copper engine will will pop, you know what I mean? So... Anyway, it should look pretty good. So I laid the intake gasket up here to give you all a better visual of what I was talking about earlier in the video. So when I, I'll put a couple of little bolts in here to hold this, but you can see where areas would be painted and where they normally wouldn't be painted because, you know, normally people will mask off this entire face side of this. So after you paint it, you know, and pull your tape off, all this is bare metal. Then when you put your intake gasket on and bolt your intake on, this area right here always surface rests because there's no coating on it. So anyway, that's why I taped off the actual uh, same model number gasket that I'm going to be using. Because I know when I put the gasket on there, it's painted all the way up to it, so it'll look clean. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot uh, of masking off to do. Um, I do have some spark plugs that the ceramics broken off of and I've always kept them just for the bolt part for a plug in the in the heads You know, I don't even I mean looks at these these might be for big plugs and all I've got is the little ones that take a 5 8 plug socket I think these old heads are always the 13 16 if I remember right. Let's find out. I got one right here That's what I mean by the ceramic broke off of it. Oh, no, it does take 5 8 Okay, cool. So I'm happy about that. <clears throat> anyway, that'll keep paint from getting down in the cylinders. Not that it'll really hurt that much because, you know, not a lot of paint will probably get down in there or hurt anything. But anyway, I'll mask off where the fuel pump block off plate goes, or not necessarily the block off plate, but the main plate. Uh, he is running a mechanical fuel pump on it. But anyway, lots of, lots of masking to do, but I'll have to tape off that other gasket first really good. Now, if you are going to mask off your gaskets like I did, so you'll have a good tape line. Uh, be sure and check it where it says this side up on the gasket. See that right there? This side up right there. Anyway, that's the plan. So today, 
I, I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I kind of thought that I'd like to get it all painted today with the spray paint, let it set an hour or so, and then come back out and scuff, scuff it down and then shoot the base coat clear coat. It's just going to be kind of rushing it, and I don't really want to do that. I've always done the spray paint engine enamel first and then come back out the next day and then scuffed it down and then did that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because um, it's in the 60s, and tonight it'll probably get down into the 40s. So, uh, you know, a little bit of extra time for the, the stuff to cure out is always a good thing. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get the engine painted orange after I get it masked off and the intake masked off. Now, I flushed the entire intake through all the intake ports of coolant passages the oil fill tube all that i used brake clean out of the aerosol can so i just hosed the crap out of that thing down inside all the of it so there's no media dust or stuff left in there and i did blow the crap out of it with my blower with 130 psi coming out of it so or 120 whatever that is over there so i know that there's nothing left in there and that's not my first intake i blast i usually blast all my intakes before i paint them anyway because it roughs them up a little bit more, you know what I mean? So, anyway, that's where I'm at. But I want to get this painted today. And uh, then tomorrow, I can come out and use the fine gray scotch Bright and scuff it down. And then I'll mix up the base, spray it on there, and I'll let it set probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe an hour. I usually give my stuff a little bit longer of a time. And then I'll go back and mix up some clear and shoot that. But... I've got other stuff that I have to get ready, or at least masked up and ready, like brake calipers for the front, because we're going to paint those copper. Uh, I think there's a couple other things. I just don't remember what they are right off right off hand. But anyway, so I'm going to get to it. Oh, might, that might cover this. There are some spray paint lids out there, caps off the spray paint can, that will fit a small block Chevy on there. And it, it kind of tension sets on there. It, uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to put like 100 PSI out of a paint gun to it. It'd probably blow it off there. But as far as, you know, spray painting and all that, it'd work perfect for that. But anyway, so you can use one of these. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just mask it off, though, because, you know, I don't want to be in the middle of painting and this thing fall off and then maybe get overspray on something or maybe this mess up the paint as it's falling down. So I got some tedious work ahead. All right, so I just got off the phone with Steve. Um, I've got a few things that I took pictures of directly off the computer screen that Amazon actually had some car parts uh, that I'd like to get for the car. And anyway, I told him I would send him some pictures, but I'm also going to see if they have this Felpro intake gasket set on there that has the, the exhaust crossover block off. Um, th that's what I always run on my cars. I know some guys say you have to have it, some guys like it, but I don't. And I'm the one doing the work on the car. So, anyway, I'm going to see if those are on Amazon. And if they are, I'll get a picture of that. But, uh, anyway, we were talking and he bought Kragers for the car. And a brand new set of BF Goodrich Radial TA raised white letters. So, this car is going to look fantastic. Steve's old school. He, he likes 55s with white letter tires. And he likes those old school wheels. Now, I do like Kragers on 55s. And I think it's going to look exceptional on this car. I think it's really going to look nice because, you know, I mentioned it before, and I've been bugging him about it, trying to get him to buy wheels. The I just have always felt like the, the rallies are for muscle cars. You know what I mean? And anyway, I'm not knocking anybody that has rallies. I ran rallies on a 55 I had. Actually, two of them I have. But uh, it was back when I was a kid. Wasn't hardly making any money. And, you know, you use what you have type of deal. But... Anyway, I am over the moon now because he's putting Kragers on it. it it's going to look awesome, man. That's the wheel that my Uncle Wayne had on his 55 hardtop. He had Krager SS's. And my brother, uh, his 55 Tour Post, he had five slot mags on his car, but that's what he wanted. He was going to paint his car, get it painted or whatever, and then he was going to buy some Kragers and put on it. He just never got to that point. Um, the he got rid of the car before he'd done all that it was still in primer when it was sold anyway he took it somewhere and stored it and went back and it was gone and that person had sold it so that's how that went it wasn't by his uh doing of getting rid of the car but anyway i'm, I'm glad man the kragers on this car is gonna look freaking awesome i'm so happy and i you know i kind of felt bad because i was bugging him about it you know having muscle car wheels on his 55 and stuff but I get it, you know, you're 
he, he's got a lot of money in the car, if you can imagine. You know, he's already had one shop work on it, and I've had to go back and redo a bunch of stuff. And then we had the engine problem. We had he had to have that rebuilt. So I get it. He's you know, I I hate that he's got a lot tied up in it. But I got to tell you guys, at this point, when he comes to get this car, I'll have it all detailed out. But it'll have those chrome wheels on it, and won't have these orange muscle car wheels on it. And it's going to look like a total different car when he comes to get it. And if he doesn't win a Best Engine Compartment Award at some of them local shows around where he lives, I would be very, very surprised if it did not win a trophy. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to make sure the engine compartment is minty. <clears throat> to me, every time you drive one of your cars somewhere, it seems like everybody, want, even if you go to the gas station, there's always somebody wants to see under the hood. So, I've always went out of my way to do under hood detail like crazy. Uh, because that is what impresses people. You know what I mean? And that's where the details really come in when you have like, you know, polished bolts and stuff like that. But, uh, and I know most of you guys have seen, but to me, engine compartments detailed, that is where it's at for me. This is what I, that's my favorite thing to do. If anybody has a, you know, car that they're they're driving and stuff and you live pretty close to Tulsa Oklahoma if you feel like you want some engine compartment detail work done painting or whatever uh, get a hold of me because that's what I love to do of course I won't be able to do it right now because I'm working on Steve's car but uh, anyway where was I I don't even know where to where to go from here man I'm just I'm happy Steve got Kragers he got Krager SS's and I've, I learned something when I was looking online for the correct backspacing those wheels, they sell them in two styles. They sell them that take the shank style lug nuts, and then they sell them that take the conical seat lug nuts. So I told him to get the conical seat ones because this has chrome conical seat lug nuts on it already. So uh, I think they're 60 degree if I remember right. So that's, you know, he doesn't have to buy lug nuts because he's already got chrome lug nuts. And these are still in pretty decent shape that he had on the car because it had covers over it. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, center caps over the, the rallies, so I only have two lug nuts on each wheel, but he already has chrome lug nuts, so you don't have to spend another 30 bucks on lug nuts, or 40, or whatever the heck it is nowadays for lug nuts. But man, I'm over the moon. Um, oh, it's going to look good. And we decided, I don't know if I mentioned it in any of the videos, we put a stock height replacement leaf spring in the back, but we went with lowering coils in the front. So it's gonna have a little bit of rake in the front. It's gonna be setting down in the front a little bit. So I'll be jacked up just a little bit in the back. I think it's gonna look freaking primo, man. It's gonna look awesome. <laughs> now me personally, I if I'm doing an older school style build, like I do plan on doing eventually, I like five slot mags and I think it's because my brother's 55. Those five slots mean a lot to me and they always look good on a 55 to me. Um, he also had a 69, I think it was Firebird, and it had a 400 in it, and it had five slot mags on it, and I loved those five slot mags back when I was a kid. He's, uh, he's eight years older than I am, my brother, so, you know, I was a little kid when he was old enough to drive, but some of that stuff when you're a kid has a big impact on you, and 55 Chevys, that's why I like messing with them. That's, my mom and dad restored one, my Uncle Wayne had one. Uh, my brother had one. They're just ingrained in me. And to me, it's the most beautiful car in the world. It's just my opinion uh, because I grew up around them. <clears throat> and that's probably most likely what I'll, when I die, that's what I'll still have is my 55. You know what I mean? So, anyway. That is all. All right, guys. I never did find the other intake gasket that I had masked off. I don't have any idea what I did with it. This is an old used one. And anyway, I just covered it with masking tape. That way I have the line around it. So I ended up having to use a brand new one for my wife's gasket kit for her car, her 55. So I used aluminum foil on it and I opened up a couple of holes to run some bolts in here. So if you're going to do this, the holes in these gaskets are rather large for a 3 8 bolt. So uh, anyway, when I put it on there, uh, I put it on where it's almost snug down and then I push the gasket down as far as it'll go on that hole. And then I've kind of snug it down a little bit by hand. That way 
uh, you've got a little bit of wiggle room there. Now, when you put a bolt here and here, this top edge kind of pokes out just a little bit. So it's not completely smashed up against the head, but it'll be just fine. It'll give it a little bit of, uh, of a, you know, it'll let the paint kind of get down in that edge a little bit. So anyway, now I've got a mask or a bolt this one on and some of my tape is all crunchy and hard so i've got to replace an area of it here but anyway i'll put that one on and then i'm going to mask off the center then i got all this other masking to do all right i got the intake and the engine painted so that turned out pretty good there was quite a bit of paint on that intake uh, anyway i think it looked really nice um, then i just got done shooting the engine So I got a, quite a bit of paint on this. It took both cans. It, uh, man, that stuff's pretty transparent. You put it on and then it, you can still see dark through it. So anyway, it's got a lot of paint on it. It's uh, pretty much just a, a primer it is basically what I use it for because it is high heat. And that, that Duplicolor enamel, engine enamel for me it sticks to bare metal so well if the metal is prepped real good. Uh, I've never had a problem with that stuff. I've never primed an engine block. I just shot it with the, the color and I uh, haven't had any trouble, but I do spend a lot of time on my prep work. And that may be why, you know what I mean? But it, uh, it's orange. This is the perfect, you know, base color for ground coat, I guess, for putting the base coat on. So. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the garage and then turn out the lights because the party's over for today because it's 5 p.m. And tomorrow morning I'll come out, I will scotch bright this down with a gray scotch bright and then blow it off, wipe it down with wax and grease remover again for like the 20th time <laughs> and then uh, hit it with a base coat. So pretty excited, but it'll get to set overnight to dry. All right. It's in the morning time now, so uh, this set overnight in the garage, uh, the paint's, you know, it's cured out enough. It's spray paint. It usually dries pretty quick, but uh, now I'm going to go ahead and rough it up with a gray scotch bright, so the base coat will stick a little bit. Uh, let's see. I'll be doing the intake as well, but I forgot these yesterday. Dang it. So these are the front brake calipers, uh, so we're going to do the copper on those as well. So I cleaned all the spray paint off of here with a wire wheel on the drill. And I removed the rubber inserts. It has four O-rings, basically, that go in here. Uh, so I removed those. It looked like one was still in there at that angle, but it's not. Uh, but anyway, I removed those, and then that way when I paint it, uh, I can put the O-rings back in, and the, there's no you know paint on that rubber to cause issues for anything but I need to I need to remove these uh, seals here but I kind of really don't want to so what I think I'm going to do is just kind of mask them off uh, a little bit bigger a little bit out further because this is zinc plated so I think I'll just come out just a little bit past the rubber there and uh, mask the piston seal off there uh, if you guys have never messed with brake calipers before, uh, they're very simple. You can get a rebuild kit, and it usually just consists of an O-ring and uh, the outer seal here. So you can remove this seal with a pick or a really small jeweler's flat blade screwdriver and get that seal up out of there. And then you can apply a little bit of air uh, through the bleeder hole or the input hole, it doesn't really matter and like put a rag over it, hold your hand over it pretty good and then put air in there and it'll pop that piston out of there and you can pull it out and then you can clean that up. If it's super rusty crusty, it's probably not rebuildable, but that's as simple as it is to rebuild brake calipers. If the, if the piston wall in there is really nice, it's kind of like an engine. If it's pretty good, you can just basically re-ring it, which is an O-ring, uh, pretty simple deal, but. I've got some little rubber caps that will fit down in here. It's actually ones that come in them brand new and I always save them. It's a rubber cap that fits in there, but it has an outer shoulder on it that comes out. So I'm going to use those for a paint mask so it doesn't get paint up here where the brass uh, or the copper seal goes. 
So I've got my gray scotch brights out here. These gray scotch brights are always softer uh, than uh, the red or brown. I've heard people call them red or brown, but anyway, they look more like a purple to me. But anyway, these are coarse and these are fine. So if you're trying to rough something up pretty good for some paint, that works pretty good. But if you're roughing up spray paint, in this case, engine enamel on an engine, you want to use this because that will really dig that spray paint pretty bad. So I got a little slide tray here. And usually when I have a rubber cap or a vacuum cap or anything, I'll just throw it in here. There it is right there, I think. This is a little plug and it usually comes in the calipers and it has a wide top, but it fits in there. So this will if I have two of them, that'd sure be nice. Actually, that doesn't go out very far. Let's see if I've got a... I'm going to find some thin washers and put on there that's a little bit bigger. And then... You know what? I might use those used ones. Well, this is what I'm thinking. This is two of the used ones that came in the on them. Unfortunately, they only had one on each brake line. You're supposed to have one on each side of the hose. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. Oh yeah, that works good, man. That's a paint mask right there. <clears throat> but there's one hole there and one of these. That does have a bleeder screw hole because I did take the bleeder screws out so they didn't get painted. I mean, they already painted them cast iron gray, but I don't like just going in and painting every single thing, you know. Let's see if these little vacuum caps will... Yeah, that kind of works. So I just used a red vacuum cap and just kind of screwed it down in there. All right, so there's one. Hey, I found the other one. How cool is that? Can't beat that. I didn't think about that, but I bet that camera's shaking all the hell because the I'm working on this little flimsy deal here. Oh well, footage is too terrible, I'll just delete it. Alright. Alright, so I've started sanding on this with the gray. And uh, all I'm really doing is trying to get it, uh, you know, scuffed up so they can get a little bit of paint adhesion out of it. But if you used a, the, the red Scotch-Brite on here, it would really dig the crap out of that spray paint. So the gray is the way to go. Plus they fold up and crinkle up and you can get them in all kinds of different places. So the thing about the intake is it was, you know, smooth basically, EnduraShine. It's not a rough cast like most intakes are. And so this is really going to be nice looking on top of that engine. and. That's the most uh, visible thing is, you know, all this up in here when the hood's up. So I think that's kind of nice that it's actually polished out like that. Well, I got the... Everything's scotch brighted, and then I went back and uh, blew everything off. Uh, I actually blew the driveway off, and then blew all the parts off. So, 
this is what I come up with to hang the calipers. I'm using a little mini touch-up gun so it won't be too bad to get in there from the backside to paint that. <clears throat> but with just junk that I have here, it's about all I had to do. Um, got the intake propped up on a board and that's so I can get a little bit of, make sure I get paint on the edge of that so that doesn't flake off. I want it to be under just a little bit. But it is, uh, it's getting close to lunchtime and I think I'm going to have to wait probably till my wife leaves from eating lunch here because when she gets here she's in that new car and I don't want to get over spray on it so I'll have to look at my clock in the house I don't know what time it is but it feels like it's getting close to lunch time but I need to go in now and uh, tack rag it off and then it's pretty much ready to shoot so I unhooked my main air hose this is the one that's always hooked up so it's full of water and oil and crap from the compressor um, so i have this one here that i only use for painting and i have a desiccant snake on here and i've actually got another desiccant filter there and then a, one of those toilet paper style filters right there this thing is pretty old and i've used it quite a bit so it probably is time to change it and i think those were around 20 bucks this is a devilbus brand but it's called a desiccant snake it's full of the disc and stuff, but for the garage painter at home, this is a necessity because you're going to have water in your lines because you don't have the proper, you know, paint booth set up, you know, with your air hose and water traps and all that kind of stuff. Water traps are supposed to be like 50 feet from the compressor. So when it gets real hot outside, uh, your compressor makes condensation or moisture, whatever you want to call it. It always works its way in the lines and if it's an old compressor and it's pretty war you'll have a little bit of oil that gets through there as well so I, that's why i have a separate hose for that and this one's probably about time to change because i have painted quite a bit of stuff with this one but anyway what i usually do is when i do finally buy a new hose i will use turn this one into my new main hose and then this one will get coiled up and put away for in case I need to hook a whole bunch of hoses together and stretch it out to the backyard for some reason like I have before but anyway useless information
Well, that's the final coat of clear. I put two coats on. So, that'll work, man. Got the brake calipers done. They got two coats as well. the intake All right, so this is the handle for Steve's cooler that the battery is going to be in in the trunk. So this was zinc plated and it was kind of corroded and pretty rough looking. So I sanded it all down and uh, put some primer on it and then scuffed it. And then this is uh, some kind of, I think it's just bright silver pearl. It was a little pint can I had in there, and I put that on there. I was going to put the, the color that I put on his transmission on it, but it's a little bit darker, and I think it would have clashed on that polished cooler, because I'm going to polish that cooler to a high finish, so I thought the lighter of a silver would look a little bit better. So Anyway, this has two, two coats on it, and there's two little brackets as well uh, that go on each end on the top of the cooler, and it's actually the lock plates for this handle and I'd have, I've got them cleared and everything so anyway this is the last thing to be cleared I almost forgot this piece so I had to get it out of the garage and scotch bright it down and then hit it so I almost forgot about it all right so when I hang things out here I've showed it before but anyway I've got wires that stay connected to my carport and they they have little loops in them and then when I'm done using them, I just kind of fold them up right a little bit. That way they don't hit the roof of the car. But I use a secondary piece of wire through this. And then that way when I'm done painting, I can move it. In here, because unlike some people, I don't have a shop. 